Hello, in today's video, we're going to explore the meshing of cage and pack type of gears. In olden times, when we didn't have access to modern materials and manufacturing processes, these were the kind of gears which could be readily made out of wood with minimal uh, machining requirements and would serve the purpose. But there are certainly some kinematic errors in this profile uh, which we'll explore. So we're going to explore all this with the help of uh, this Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and we'll be simulating uh, the rotation of the gear and pinion by virtue of uh, a circular reference that we'll be making here in cell A23. So first of all, let's have a look at some of the parameters. Just as we do in case of gears, we have the pitch circle radius of the gear and the pinion. So gear we have taken in the form of a cage and pinion we have taken in the form of a peg. So the CD works out to be the sum of the two radii. Uh, we can change the module that will change the number of teeth because uh, by definition uh, the number of teeth depends upon the module. Okay, now let's change uh, the diameter of the cage or the peg. Likewise we see that uh, the parameters can get tuned. So profile correction factor has uh, no role out here because I haven't designed it to do anything. I don't know whether this cage and packed up type of gears they had any such thing as profile correction factor. Likewise the pressure angle is also like meaningless right now. I have uh, uh, taken this spreadsheet, I have adapted the, the one created for involute gears for doing this kind of analysis. So those things are inherited from that one. Okay, so let's see how it all goes. We start with a rotation of zero then we'll do a simulation. Let's first reduce the number of teeth, okay. So I've increased the module to 3. Okay, let's try to simulate the rotation. So I provide a circular reference here is equal to A23 plus 1. You'll have to turn on the iterations and set them to 1. Now with each press of the F9 key, this will be executed once. So now we have what we'll be able to see here because this is the holistic view on the uh, in the graph on the left and the towards right we have the close-up view of the meshing if required I'll zoom in now you can see uh, in this separate sheet what we are doing is we are providing a standard rotation as per the gear ratio in terms of the number of teeth to these gears now we can see this peg is kind of digging into the cage so because in actual practice this won't be possible so what will happen is if this pinion is the driving one what will happen is it will push the gear more that is the angular velocity will increase as the point of contact progresses from uh, the tangency point of the pitch circles I should not call it the pitch point because by definition that's different so as the point of contact progresses away from the line joining the centers, the speed of the gear or the speed of the cage will tend to increase. Okay, let's simulate it further. So I press the F9 key. You see there is a variation in the rotation. And what is happening on the other side is, there is you can see a gap here between the cage and the peg. So if this uh, the last tooth had followed the profile of the peg the, this gap would have been even larger. Right that means you won't have any contact out here and uh, as a result there will be contact between only one particular pair of teeth. So the moment that contact would cease you'll have a sudden impact here on the next pair which should come into mesh and likewise the effective contact ratio would never be able to exceed 
the un value of unity right so let's do a quick simulation let me move the mouse away okay now you can see this is the profile error again creeping in there you can see now next we try changing the module and uh, see the effect on the uh, theoretical as well as the practical contact ratio so what i do here is i change the radius and uh, i reduce the module so the number of teeth increases okay now let's once again zoom into it and see the effect now we have larger uh, number of pairs coming close to each other and we'll be able to see the error in the profile more closely now you see this pair is transmitting force certainly this one is not able to make any kinematic contact so they'll just progress slowly somewhere maybe it will come into contact but practically this will not be possible because uh, the peg here will push this uh, cage tooth away and uh, likewise as much as interference we see here so much the gap will appear on the next pair of teeth now what will happen actually is with the passage of time this theoretical interference will lead to wearing out on the profile and this profile will eventually modify itself towards the involute profile and likewise the meshing will become kinematically more correct and we'll be able to achieve a better contact ratio hope this simulation has served to appraise you about the problems in the meshing of non involute profiles i request you to write your comments in the comments section and uh, let me know if i need to make any such videos in future thanks for watching